Petri, did you ever think they would be playing again? Uh, if you were to ask me about two years ago, I'd have said no, if, uh, because the uh, the idea of uh, putting the band together again just to be the band was wasn't something I was particularly interested in. I was I was very much of the mind and the, and the opinion, even back in sort of 1999, that uh, the band was labouring and uh, it wasn't being and doing what it should have been doing as a band, as a potent force. And uh, you know, Stuart's condition in my mind was something that needed attention. And continuing the band, being on the road, trying to write music, trying to make records, just doesn't seem to be a very good idea. So um, I spoke to Stuart about this. Uh, we, we got together one evening and just sort of sat down and chewed the fat. And I basically told him that, you know, this, I'm, it's the end of the road for me because I, I don't want to see him deteriorate. I don't want to see the band's reputation deteriorate. We've done brilliant things over, the, you know, the preceding years to really put the band in a position. But uh, I don't think, didn't think we were going to do, it, do ourselves any good unless we took a break uh, and Stuart go away and sort of look after himself and repair himself and just get enthusiastic for, for being in the band and writing music again. So after that European tour, you know, kind of, you know, all, to all intents and purposes, left the band. Uh, and then we were asked to do this uh, gig in Malaysia, uh, in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, and it was a kind of a big money do, so I couldn't really say no. But uh, by the time we all arrived there, you know, we were all a bit apprehensive about Stuart because we'd heard so much about his condition. And uh, by the time he actually arrived, all those, uh, you know, all those rumours and stuff were really very much founded. He was in a bad way. And I just, I remember playing that concert just thinking we were just like a parody of, of ourselves and we weren't even that good either. And I just said, that's it, that's enough for me. So by the time I got back to Heathrow, I'd finished. And I, I didn't really see him again, which was, you know, unfortunate. Uh, I think in the, in the intervening year, He'd gone off and started his uh, American band thing, uh, and I just thought to myself, well, why is he doing that? It, it, that's not what he should be doing. He should be getting his head together and, you know, start to find out how to enjoy life again and, and try to sort out, you know, the, the, uh, the alcohol thing, you know, in order to get back to, into shape, which is why I never, didn't see him, because he was doing all that kind of stuff. And, and I was hearing reports from people you know, when they went to see him when he came over to Britain with his new outfit and I was getting all these reports back and it was just depressing. And I kind of thought, well, you know, he's obviously, he's not capable to sort himself out or he's just not into it anymore. So I kind of stepped off the big country machine, you know, permanently by then. You know, I started to look for other things to do and other, other ways to conduct my life, which was going to be interesting to me, which is why I took the course I did. But to bring it sort of, round circle no I didn't think that uh, we were played together as a band purely and simply because I, I va very much value what we did as a band and I didn't want that to be tarnished and in order to do this I had to be in a good frame of mind about it I mean Bruce and Mark have been fantastic during the intervening years I must have really hacked them off on occasions when people you know were asked to do things and I always kind of begrudgingly either did them we did a we did a, a, a fan club convention in 2006 in Holland. Uh, I don't remember much about it, but I remember that I didn't want to be there and I didn't want to do it. And that's when we played with Mike. Mike came and did some songs with us. And I completely forgot about that until recently. So uh, it wasn't until the idea of having Mike come and do this with us where I actually found myself in a situation where I actually considered it quite seriously. But then again, I was in a better position as well. You know, I was quite happy with my life. I was doing lots of personal things happening to me. But uh, in terms of the band, as long as it didn't turn out to be something that was just trading on the band's name or just there as a financial thing, you know, it had to be put back with integrity. And uh, I kind of had the idea that Mike would give us that integrity and, and we could do it properly. And uh, it's been founded. How how different was it when you got back together as a three piece to to now? How can you compare those two? Oh, periods? it doesn't. It's, it's different. I mean, doing the, the, the three piece tour was just a way for us, as you know, band pe members, friends, mates, to pay respects to, to Stuart. I mean, we were asked to do a tour, 
uh, and then the whole idea of sort of getting people to come in and guest and doing that, and it all sounded sloppy to me. It, it, you know, to get this person to play this and get this person to sing, and getting other guests and all that, and, it, and the whole thing just didn't feel right to me. So we kind of insisted we did it as a three piece, so we can just pay our respects. And that tour went quite well, actually. We were quite surprised. You know, I, I took on a lot of the lead vocal, which was an experience for me which I really enjoyed, but it's not the kind of thing that I wanted to do. I certainly didn't have any ideas of continuing as Big Country, as a three-piece, as as the band's lead singer. That's not my place, that's not what I do. But for that tour, it felt right to do, and I was happy with that. How do you like Mike Peters as a front man? Awesome. Uh, he gets that crowd going, doesn't he? Well, I think, I, got, I look at it from a different point of view. He's a lovely man. He's a, an excellent soul brilliant human being his heart's in the right place he's grown up with us within the atmosphere of music that we have and he understands us and we understand him you know his band have done what they've done over the years and we've done what we've done but we've always there's always been a connection uh, whether it be kind of um whether just the alarm as a band or mike doing solo stuff because the two entities have supported the band in the, in the past, so having Mike on board is is like having this sort of old friend that we knew of in the past. And but as a performer, I think I know I've always kind of valued him as a performer. But seeing seeing him perform with us, I think he's learning a lot from us as well. I think he's really pulling out the stops now, and I think he's an awesome, awesome uh, sort of uh, front person. You know, uh, somebody jokingly said, "Well, you've got your own Bono now," but. I can only take that as a compliment. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, every band needs a front man. I mean, the, the, what the weird thing for me is that uh, Stuart was a guitarist who sang. Mike's a singer who just hangs a guitar around his neck and poses a bit. But they both they both have different jobs. You see, so we were, you know, big country with Stuart was what it was, and that's the way it was. It could have couldn't be any other way, but. With Mike, you know, we've we've we're kind of treading some little un sort of founded areas for us, you know, being a guitar band but having a front man who can do other things as well. So that's a bit different, and that's kind of interesting. So your plans for the future of Big Country at this time? Nothing's really uh, cast in stone yet. Beautiful, so we just want to see how this works out, and you know, each gig we do is another bit of enthusiasm and encouragement for us all you know we have to pay respect to Mike that you know he's still got his own band I mean as soon as we finish this tour the alarm go out for their tour they're on tour for a month so it's not as if we can kind of make those sort of plans and you know he's got his own thing to do but um, I'd like to think the band will go either two ways that because of the encouragement we've had we will try and sort of see if we can make music together see if we can actually come up with something that will be worthy of putting down on record and calling a big country record and I will be unbelievably critical of that because if it doesn't if it's not going to work then I don't want to to, to to go down that road you know I don't want to put out substandard stuff I don't want people to think about comparing old big country to new big country because the new big country ain't as good as the old one and all that kind of stuff I don't want to go down that road I want to be able to sort of say look if there's a new record, this is it, check this out. We are 100% behind this. But I don't want to also, I don't want to do the kind of heritage band thing of just kind of maybe just going out as big country once a year and doing the hits. That's that, that'll wear it out in time. So I don't know, it's all up in the air. Now I'm, I'm not the only Australian that's coming out to see you this time, How do you, right. uh, and I've bumped into Americans as well who have yeah. come over. Um, how do you feel about the, con the continuous worldwide appeal that, that Big Country still has to this day? <clears throat> um, I've used an expression in interviews recently, again being interviewed again is quite a, a, a new thing for, for me and uh, I'm having to discover how to sort of deal with this, but the one thing that comes to mind when I think and reflect about this is that the whole thing's been brilliantly shocking shockingly brilliant and I revel and marvel after every gig after everything that we do in this new kind of climate that we've, we're bringing back, bringing about and it's all fantastic and you know people have come so far and wide you know the questions are well you know you're gonna come out and see us well well <laughs> it didn't even stop to consider that so yeah an Australian tour an American tour a European tour 
I mean, this, that would be a lot of commitment f for us. And as I say, if we can make good music and put a record together, that will be on. But, but I don't think... I don't on that, is it? I would have thought so, because... You can't just tour the hits? Um, maybe. Initially. But I think we as a band would want to move forward if we can. But we've got to find that out yet. You know, that's why I say nothing's cast in stone. I mean, if we were to go to do America next year, then, you know, circumstances would have to be that everybody's available, everybody's in the right place, and whatever, because uh, myself and Bruce have outside interests in terms of what we do, and uh, that's all got to be kind of part of the organisation. But, as I say, if a record's on the cards, then the game changes. Tony Butler, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, for, and thank you for coming all the way over here. Yeah, my, it's pl very my absolute pleasure. No, it's, we are very grateful for what you do for us and how you spread the word about the band, and uh, hopefully we will we'll come over and uh, we'll be your guests. Very good. <laughs> Thanks.